What is up Lorcana goons? We are back with another Pixelborn gameplay video for you today. And just like last time, we're gonna go through the Lorcana goons Facebook and look at one of our top 8 reports that we did and just basically copy one of those decks card for card and try them out. Uh, we're gonna try out an older top 8 that we did. It was uh, 5 days ago as you can see right here. And let's just look in inside of the post right here. So we have the top eight chart. It was the one of the bigger tournaments, 128 players. Um, so we have 50% was the Amber Steel. Um, and then we had one ofs of everything else over here. We go in depth on the, our top eight report if you guys want to check it out. We have a playlist of all of the top eights on our channel as well. But this is what we're looking for right here. So, we're looking at this Emerald Sapphire list right here that got top 8. Um, it's a very, very, very budget list. It has, I don't think it has any legendaries in it. I guess the, besides the John Silver and the Hades, maybe? Yeah, but other than those two cards, this is probably a fairly budget deck. And this is the one we're going to try today, and we'll get started on it. Alright, we have completed the deck. It is right here. It is the same one titled Zundo. So yeah, let's just get right into looking for a game. Uh, I have the deck list right there above me. You can see it's um, basically just a little bit of ramp and a lot of just having stuff on the board and hopefully getting some value with Phil. It looks like we're trying to do early on. We have Eye of the Fates to give ourselves some extra lore. So we're going to get rid of these late game cards right now, and we're going to draw back into them, so that's always good, right? So we're going to have to go flounder, we're really going to try to ramp as soon as possible. What are we most likely not going to use? The John Silver, I think, first. Put the flounder out there. So one ink, two two. Not the not the worst stats. If you can combo it off with a fill. Oh, they're perfect. There it is. So we're gonna get the fill out there. This is gonna put a lot of pressure and give our uh, potentially give our flounder plus three with its uh, support. So we'll get the one more from this and hopefully get a clear with the, this flounder because it'll potentially be a five two. And then next turn we're going to be able to do the mouse. And then if we do the Eye of the Fates, everything just starts getting a little more scary. Because this lore account is going to go up significantly faster than theirs. Because they're still setting up. Primatala. So we're probably not going to let it go. into the Mickey Mouse so we can get that ramp. We'll be at 4. I'm not gonna do this just because I don't want to risk that trade with the Grand Matala. That's just... I think that's just too good. We'll do this trade right here once um, they exert Tala for Loring. I'm pretty sure that's what's gonna happen here. Mickey, sure. I'm not worried about the Mickey. Okay, they're gonna try to ramp two. So we're definitely gonna hit this right there. Because I don't want them to kill the fill. I'm still not gonna do the fill. They'll be at six though. Did I. I missed what other color they were playing. I could just bounce that back to the hand with this. With the singing, um. The Mickey. I don't think that's worth it though, right? I think we should just do this trade. That's probably gonna hurt us later on in the game. We'll do Eye of the Fates. We have to ink the Flounder. I don't wanna not ink. And now this Flounder gets to quest for two. Yeah, I didn't want to miss out on that ink. And then I could potentially, if I draw into something that's inkable, I can sing this and summon the genie. Reset the board and I have something strong. I missed out on what they were inking, so I'm not sure what, what the other color is. 
I have a really bad habit of doing that, especially when playing on online. But as long as it's not Ruby, I'm not worried about any like crazy board clear. It's seven though, so it is Ruby. I must. I'm sure they. Oh, that's pretty good actually. I just want to let that go, this there, and then just start questing, right? Get rid of the problem. But then this is dead. I'm sure if they had be prepared, they would have be prepared, right? But then that just comes down. I'd rather get rid of that problem, I think. At least now, if they be prepared me, I still have the genie in my hand. And he just gets rid of, uh, little guys. It's a Maui. I wasn't expecting the Maui. But I mean... It's fine with me. There. I'd rather just let that happen there. Oh, that was scary. It was like glitching out right there. You saw that? I can return my own Mickey, that's crazy, huh? Return the Mickey, summon it again? Could have done that, that wouldn't have been bad, right? The Hades is good. There's no reason not to do this, right? If he doesn't clear this, I have lethal, but he could just Hades again, right? Aggressive deck. Another Hades? Another Hades, let it go. There's a lot of cards here, be prepared. That's interesting. I mean Next turn I win if, he, if they don't get rid of the Mickey. The little Aladdin too. Oh, I won. Crazy, huh? I have the Fates is so strong in this deck. That's the game right there. So, the super aggressive, super, super aggressive deck. It's, as you saw there, it's just like summon all these little guys. If you get the Eye of the Fates on turn four, ideally, you're just able to press for so much. Why does it say one out of three on my on my lore? You saw that? 
I kind of want the fill. We're gonna keep the fill. I want to keep that ram. So this is not bad, actually. This is a, a good value hand. I got rid of the, the Robin Hood there just because, uh, I don't know, I just feel like I'm going to use these cards faster than I I'll use something else in my hand. Flounder here or the Grandma Tala? Because if he does the, the hook trade there, I'm not really worried because then it just kills it. Especially with Phil there. You could sing this with Tala if need be. I really want to see Eye of the Fates. So on the list above, we're definitely maxed out on Eye of the Fates. There, yeah, that's like one. Of the, is that, that's the only item we played too. Okay, I'm okay with that trade. I can do fill. Let's get rid of this dude. And then probably... Is Flounder? Because I could sing this with this, right? Should I miss out on the lore right now, though? There's no reason for me to do this, right? Yeah, I'll be at four, but I have no cards in my hand either way. Whatever. Let's just try it. Let's just try to get some ramp. I got rid of that Mad Hatter though. I shouldn't have gotten rid of that Mad Hatter. I probably should have kept it, especially with the amount of ramp I had in my hand. Yeah, now it's a uh, now it's a little scary. So we don't summon everything here because of the grabber sword. It's too much value for them. But I think I messed up by uh, thinking that Mad Hatter. I should have got rid of this this flounder. Look, it got stuck in my hand. Oh, the BR Guest? Double Lantern. I'm, uh, I'm gonna be pretty behind. Double Aerial? Is he gonna get something from the, from the effect also? Yeah, it's a lot of value right there. The Cusco. We have to do the Cusco, right? That's going to put the most pressure on them. But maybe I just summon a fill. Let's just try to bait out the, the grab your sword. To grab your sword. I'm even with, I mean, with the Mad Hatter, I probably would have been at a little bit of a better, like, better state, but dang, the Tinkerbell really, really puts a number on me right here. gonna have to for sure cause a grab your sword to come down I'm at draw amazing we got double lantern yeah this is kind of this is a wrap I believe right there we'll play it we'll let them go through but 
so the amber steel we saw being the high contender in that um, in that top eight. If you saw the the chart when I was looking at her post, so this deck is still really strong. It's a it's a lot of pressure. They have a lot of good cards like the grab your swords, the songs, the aerials to help you dig for them. I mean, if I get rid of this, I get rid of this ability to draw, which is in bad. But this is an uphill battle for sure. We got rid of the one grabber sword, but who knows if they have another one. Double lantern. Let's see that. Not bad. Stitch. So now they're just obviously trying to quest, quest, quest their way to victory, and I'm not gonna be able to do much about it, I don't think. If an opponent has more cards in their hand, I'm not gonna have... You know, 6 on board, 12, 15. If I kill this, summon this, he can do 2 there. Yeah, this is kind of unwinnable, I think. Hit there. We're gonna have to try to slow them down as much as possible. Because what is that? 9, 10, 13. Another little guy. More than likely, this is gonna happen because that just kills. And then they'll do two to my Cusco. I forgot about that one actually. I guess two Cusco. This doesn't help me. Well, this is five. I guess these do the same thing, right? They're both gonna sing five. I drew another one of these? That's crazy. I inked this so I can see if I could draw into maybe like a Hades or something, or what else do we got on the deck? To let it go wouldn't have been bad. We let it go with the Tinkerbell, and we're in a really good spot, you know. But what's yeah, 16, 17, 3, even 3. I can't. Even if I do that and that. Yeah, no, there's, there was no way. I, I for sure probably played that wrong in the in the beginning, but they also they also drew like crazy cards. You gotta admit, they drew like perfect. So yeah, we'll go on to the next one. The Amber Steel is still a good contender. If you guys made that deck, it's still a very viable deck, as we just saw. Let's see, we're gonna keep the ramp. I don't want all these high cost cards still. I want to see the eye of the fates. It's kind of the the point here, I think. At least we got a one drop. But we do have a lot of high cost cards in here. Um We are going second also. So hopefully that gives us that extra turn to get the eye of the fates, that extra draw card. And they know they're going first. So we got Amethyst. Pascal for Pascal. Let's see. We're going second. Get rid of that first. We'll do the Duke of Wesselton. To the Pascal. I think last game we weren't quest enough, so we weren't putting on enough pressure, so I'm just gonna Do I ignore that that kind of a a good trade though? Oh, Emerald Amethyst we played this last time. Let's see here. I think we have a decent amount of RAM to summon these uh, high-cost characters. And as 
As much as I want to do this trade, I don't think I can. I gotta just uh, go for the quest, honestly, at this point. Because they're gonna go with their evasives, and those evasives could be pretty scary. same am Emerald Amethyst list that I played last time. And there's just a bunch of evasives in there that I'm really worried about. And then, uh, see the generate some card advantage. Oh, what is the best? Okay. Doesn't want me to ram. I'm just gonna ink it anyway. It's an interesting move there, though. Get rid of the Tala because I could possibly do this turn six with one of these. Turn five Emerald. If I get rid of these, I think now's a good time to do this trade, if anything, because I got the Mad Hatter and I'll reestablish the board. I don't want them to just hit right there. Well, that doesn't tr that doesn't kill it though, or that doesn't end it at all. Megara though, Megara does something, right? Megara's the one that boosts. I don't want them to do any value trades. This is what I would be plus two right now instead of uh So I'd be at five. Maybe that was correct to do, but we'll see. Go. Okay, so we're gonna have to bounce. Um, let's just go Arcusco for the pressure, right? Do I wanna ink fill here and get the flounder out there? There's no reason to, right? get a genie on me a genie would be scary and then I can't get rid of it anyway I think we just have to go like get as many of them on here because the only out the only removal is the genie in this deck I think and of course the mother's no best this down at a time. Did we save Tala? We're at six already. There's no reason not there's no reason to to get rid of my cards, right? I need cards in my hand. Yeah. I just need to go wide, so there's no reason to get rid of my cards at this point. The more characters I have on board, the better, because once I get the Eye of the Fates, a lot of these just become too lore, and I think that's too strong. There's the genie. Get rid of Mad Hatter. Because I have the same amount as them. And there we go. So. 
Let's go. Put this back down there. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I shouldn't have done this. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter because I have lethal on board. It's just more to prevent that body right there because what was it? It's two, right? Three? Yeah, two. So now I can't quest and it wastes this whole turn. And it just reinforces my mana here, I think. Trade's not enough. You should have probably been trading a little earlier, because this is still the, the four I need. Yeah. So, as you guys saw there, clearly, deck super aggressive. It gains lore really, really quickly. And um, I mentioned it's a budget deck, and I do want to break it down just a little bit. So I have this right here. Uh, nothing too fancy. I just broke down the cards. So this is the whole list that I just played right now. These are all the cards. I didn't name them all. I just kind of generally put it down. But this is what the cost of the whole deck is just based on lowest TCG player. 351.42 without shipping, obviously. This is just what it would be. Um... So you got the blue, light blue is the commons, the green is the uncommons, and the yellow, um, what is this, purple and legendary, I mean, sorry, orange are rare and above. So if you would have came to one of our recent uh, learn to plays, you could have got a majority of these cards just for free, just for showing up, because we had like bulk on the table, so let's just eliminate a lot of cards from commons to uncommons, right? You would have more than likely found them, and you'll more than likely find people that will just give you these cards, so we'll go to the cards you're really gonna need, which is gonna be the rares and above. Um, so you're gonna need the Let It Goes, 40 bucks there, the Hades, um, I didn't really use the Hades, so I guess you can hold off on the Hades, or you can get one or two for now, like that would be good. The Robin Hoods, the Genies. So let's just say you you came to our little Let's Play and got all these uncommons and commons for free. You're looking at 262 for this deck. I think it's a good investment. This deck is really good. It's really aggressive, and it just it seemed it was really fun to play. Um, I suggest you guys try it out. And if you guys it is in your budget, I would suggest picking it up and trying it out at one of your locals. Anyways. Uh, this is Bag, I appreciate you guys showing up. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this deck, and if you're going to try it out yourself. And once again, shout out to our top 8 player playing the Zundo, or if that was his name, I wasn't, I don't really remember, sorry. But yeah, later Lorcana Goons, keep gooning.